Hey everyone, today we're playing Shadows Awakening. It's just one of those deliciously generic names, isn't it? Uh, look, I think it's going to be like a very Diablo- Wow, that was cool. A very like Diablo-ish dungeon crawler. Was that tied to me opening the menu? No, it wasn't, was it? That was just like a cool visual uh, switch over. Oh yeah, it just does that periodically. Neat. I just wanted to see- Okay, it's already set to fantastic settings. Let's pump up that voice volume, even though it might mean random dudes dying is what the voices are. That's probably fine. Let's get in there. Difficulties. Old school. Quest markers and other navigation will be unavailable. I'll, I'll keep it on for now. Normals for ex experienced players, Shadow's Awakening is intended to be played on this difficulty. You should combine skills of your characters and utilize various tactics to defeat your foes. But when you're ready for it, there's two more. We're going to be doing... Just normal difficulty for this preview. That's a real nice looking environment. I'm trying to look at what's going on there. I think that's... Okay, the weird wisps are really thick and look flat and weird, but I think that's just candle smoke. I'm like, what are those, ghosts? Oh, I see spiders. I see a mob of spiders at the base of the stairs there. Yeah, lots of corpses, lots of giant vertical abysses, very like Mines of Moria going on here. And we got God Rays kind, not really God Rays, just kind of a blooming backlight. Perhaps I should feel some twinge of guilt at all I have done, but I've had little time for scruples. It was once an honor to be entombed within these ancient catacombs, but centuries have passed, uh, and now only the brave or foolhardy walk these tunnels. Perhaps I'm the last living soul here, although I'm far from alone. This is not my story, although I am the architect of what transpires. A conspirator in the ruination that threatens the heretic kingdoms. And the most unlikely of alliances that might yet save us all. And Mas Inca Serra Tilbarana! Thou summons me. What is thy pact? I seek only that we shall both survive. Thou hast a liar's tongue and cannot be trusted. I do not ask you to trust me, nor should you. I would betray you without hesitation, if I deemed it necessary. But we are fortunate, you and I. We have the same enemies. Our only hope lies in partnership, which is precisely why I have summoned you here, demon. Oh, I play as the demon, okay. That caught me by surprise. The, uh... The dialogue auto proceeds. It had, it had a little like press one to continue thing, but it just automatically does that anyway. I assume it's a toggleable feature somewhere. I have one spell, Frost Chain. Highlighting it does not tell me what it does. All right, so that's Q, QWE. It's a point and click move around game. Someone's good at having some very eye catching, evocative environmental designs. Let's see down here. We have the inventory screen whole lot of slots for your character right over here. Where does your generic loot go? Here's my skills. Frost chain. Damage ice. Continual ice damage on intervals of every half second it looks like. It freezes for three seconds. You can be... You can level up a few times to go to the higher rank versions of these. Oh yeah. It costs one, two, three skill points. For each of the three ranks, and you can level it up. You reach. You can have level one at level one. You can have level two at level three, and level three at level ten. All right. This interface generally makes sense. That's always a good sign. We have talents. I don't think I have any points. You need thirty to unlock this talent slot. Oh, this one down here. Okay, so we we have ten talent slots that we unlock every three levels. Good to know. Character screen. Just our stats. Journal. Okay. Interface all generally makes sense. Where does my loot go, though? That's the one thing I'm uncertain about. This is my inventory of, like, what I'm wearing on my character. 
But like, do I pick up random loot or do I have to make... That's what... Yeah. I don't see like a big ol' inventory screen. Maybe it'll make more sense as we go. Or maybe the slot will unlock later or something. Spooky ghost! Mur murder the ghost! Alright. Maybe a little unnecessary to use a power when I know know that just clicking on it was enough before. Yep. What's up with the glowy bit over there? I can't mouse wheel zoom in at all. What's up with that? Is that important? Not sure what that is. Ah, items. And they have auto-equipped, it looks like. Yeah, those look like ghosts of rats. Can't open that chest. You were summoned without a pact. So whichever soul you devour will now bind you to a path beyond anyone's control. Choose wisely, demon. Is this character select here? Choose a soul to consume. Jasker, Kalig, or Evia. Uh, warrior... Swordsman? He looks like a samurai or a rogue. And then mage. I'm al I am always fond of rogues. Jasker, the wild boar. A great hero in our native land of Corwin. He fell in battle over a decade ago in the accession wars against the wolf tribes of Temuria. A hunter, a loner, and an unparalleled archer. He also dabbled in the skills of an undead slaver. Choose Jaska if you wish the mobility and deadly aim of one of the greatest archers I have ever known. Undead slaver. Does that mean what I think it means? Is he is he a ranger and a necromancer? Is that what they were hinting at? I want to see. What a cursed thing awakens me! If I am accursed, then I am a curse upon thee. Soul is mine now. Ah, will you not let my weary soul rest, demon? Jaska, your soul now resides within this demon. It will try to control you, but it is also bound to your will in ways I do not yet understand. Y your voice. I know you from somewhere. But why bring me back? I have nothing more to live for. My wife. My son. Your family may be dead, but your friends, the Malfagans, are in grave danger and need your aid. If you have nothing of your own to live for, at least save them from your fate. Thou darest ignore me? Thy soul is mine now. Demon. You need Jasker just as much as he needs you. Your fate is as much in his hands as mine is in yours. Now make haste to the city of Thal that lies above this crypt. A cenotaph can transport you there. Our fates are bound together, demon. Either we shall find a way to survive together, or we shall both surely perish. Thou threatens me? No. Something far more dangerous than I threatens us all. Join me in the Tholian Arcanum as soon as you can. We have much to discuss. Puppets and party system. Switch between puppets and the devourer by pressing ASDF. Oh yeah, I have like a little party over there on the left screen left side of the screen uh, to leave the shadow realm and enter the mortal realm switch to any puppet to enter the shadow realm and leave the mortal realm switch to the devourer so they have different worlds like almost a little bit of Ikarugo where you're switching states for the whole that affects the whole world here so s okay so qwe for skill hotkeys asdf for character hotkeys that explains all the weird static ghost 
uh, rats I was seeing everywhere. But he currently has like no inventory items at all. Doesn't even have a shirt. Through and through. Magical arrow can't be stopped. It'll go through every enemy standing in its way. So I uh, start off with a piercing shot. All right, good to know. Really nice looking environmental design. Although a lot of it's very familiarly looks like uh, a lot like Diablo. Can I? Uh, so this is a real chest. Ah, uh, spider. I should get that bow. Okay. Spider bat. No. Ah. Got me. Okay. So when I saw that chest, it was because it's a physical, real chest. I can only open it as me. I just opened that door with a freaking arrow. All right. Like you do. That was a complete miss. Thankfully, spiders are notorious for having terrible, terrible eyesight. So, standing a little bit out of the way, it's like I didn't exist. <clears throat> Is that a button I can use? Hmm. Did I do that? Or did you? Thou thinkst there is a difference. I am no demon. Thou art mistaken. Have I done it? Have I achieved the, un the unachievable? I have a shirt now. Congratulations. We've come very far in our journey. God damn. That's an impactful attack. Ah! Stop it. Always the spiders. The character switch different thing is definitely like <clears throat> an interesting new uh, gimmick idea, but the I don't know. It's like the 3D, the 3D environment, the scroll, the screen scroll, the colors of the health and energy bars. There's like a bunch of details that are so specific. I have to like shake off the feeling that I'm playing some like surprise sequel to Diablo three or something. There's so many elements that call me back to that. Uh, your avatar exists simultaneously in two parallel dimensions, the mortal realm and shadow realm. The mortal realm, a physical realm where the devourer can material, uh, materialize into puppets or into the corporal form. Shadow realm, a realm of ghosts and demons where the echoes of objects that no longer exist in the mortal realm can still be present. Walk across what appears to be a broken bridge, travel through hidden passages and solid walls to discover mysterious spiritual objects, demons, elementals, mages, and magical beasts may exist in both realms. Fully explore both realms to discover every hidden place and reward. So I have to switch back and forth a lot. I shall show you true power. Is he is he always gonna say stuff like that? Oh, oh okay, bad things are attacking. Thou shalt never overcome me. This in particular, like, could potentially be a really interesting mechanic. The sanctuary. Allows you to enter the party screen and browse your puppets collection, resurrect your fallen puppets, and customize your party. Sanctuary restores hit points when standing nearby. So I can gain... <clears throat> we get a cast of warriors, hunters, and mages. Huh. The Kalig is not available in this playthrough anymore. And neither is Evia. So that was the choice at the beginning. It looks like we've lost permanent... We've permanently lost access to both of those characters for picking this one. And these might all be mutually exclusive characters? Interesting how there's no mage in this last slot. They may not all be parallel to each other. We'll have to see. Dead for a year, dead for 14 days. Wow, that was really recent. Dead for 325 years. Alright. Bit of a gap between the party. Can I attack these spiders? Nope. I can see them from here, though. Like, SQ. Boom. That's an ambush right there. Right, we leveled up. I should try to do something about that uh, character. There we go, our points. Dexterity and speed, that's obvious our, our, our strong suit is agility. Endurance affects our hit points and stuff, which is always good in these kinds of games, although as a ranged character I'll get hit less. 
mana regeneration and stuff. Let's just go all into agility for now. Get a head start on that stuff. Now you. Yeah, you probably do specialize in more like endurance and strength. Let's get in there. All right. Did you... It still says I can level you. Skills. Oh. You have a skill point. I can learn possession. Devourer will turn a single weak mind and his enemy to his side. Making him his ally. For a short period of time. You can also possess enemies in the mortal realm. Ooh. So turn to this guy, possess somebody, switch to the other guy, go back and forth. Shadow wave. A wave of dark energy will rise out of the ground, hurting and slowing down damaged enemies. I'm just really curious about the implementation of possession, so I want, I want to give that a go. That means I can turn into you, possess somebody. Where's my possess skill? I must have to equip it. Let's find out how to do that. There we go. So we can have a lot more- oh yeah, we can have a lot more skills, we just only have three slots to put them on. Okay. Although three slots per character and four characters means- that still means a lot of skills. The Soulstone of Drain. Soulstones grant the ability to restore health and mana of the Devourer and his puppets. Each Soulstone costs a single charge. Soulstone charges are replenished by souls of fallen enemies and recharged by Shadow Trader. More powerful Soulstones can be found throughout the Heretic Kingdoms. Press 2 to replenish health, 3 to replenish mana of your current character. So down here- oh yeah, they're numbered down here. Handy. So this undead archer, he's in the mortal realm, so if I possess you and then I go to you, he's on my team. That's neat. Fight him! Get him. You just shot the stairs, you idiot. <laughs> oh, he already turned- oh, he already switched back. Alright, that was not the most long-lived alliance that- wow. My normal arrows are not very strong against you either, but I can evade. What are you gonna do about that? Trick question, the answer's nothing. Ah, shit. There we go, wow. Abilities are significantly more powerful than normal attacks. It's not just about the idea that he can get some, uh, some bonus piercing, it just, it, it itself is a massively more effective skill. Than his normal attack, which is very not good. <laughs> okay, cut that out. Trying to poke around and explore. Is that something I can use? That's just candles. That's just candles. This game will probably inspire a lot of paranoid switching back and forth constantly. Just trying to see what there might be around here that you can interact with. Which might be seen as a bonus, or it might be something that just feel makes it feels like your, uh, your runs are going slower. I guess it depends more on... Yeah, I think, I think one of my questions is whether this is a game that emphasizes telling a story and going through a linear sequence, or if it emphasizes what Diablo does, which is repetitive loot grinding and doing runs constantly. Because if it's the latter, uh, the state switching might kind of be a thing that uh, just kind of slows that down and might aggravate people doing the grinding. But if that's not what they're going for, then that's cool. Hi, everybody! Oh, God. Myself. There we go. I'm mixing up my hotkeys a little bit. I gotta keep them straight. Let's see. You. You're on my team now. Oh, an evasion from a spider. GG. Alright. Okay, so you do not stay on my team for long at all. Principles of gatekeeping. Gate weaving, sorry. Kind of gatekeeping, but not in that term. Kill the things! Was that a wall? That was a wall. Interesting. Isn't the spirit realm supposed to be a, a vision of the past? So in the past, the wall was less this, uh, uh, here? Except these are floating like magic rocks. So that just raises new questions. 
God damn, that's an effective attack. Not just piercing, it has AoE. Am I just auto-equipping better items? How does... Let's see. Let's, let's, let's inspect the inventory. Helm. Okay. So there is no, like, grid or list of inventory items. It's you, you go slot by slot and pick which thing you'd, you'd rather switch between, apparently. And you, yeah, you manually choose what you think you, is better, basically. I wonder if it auto-selects at all. Okay. Also no drain, 10% healing power. Or this one gives you a bunch of stats. Also no survive. Gives me a, a bigger bonus to survivability, more mana per charge. Bunch of other things. Everything's better, basically. More charges, more mana and health per charge. This one gives you 10% healing power, though. This one gives you 100 hit points. Uh... Every other stat's better though, even the cooldown, it has a red negative one, but like that's... It's actually weird that it's red, because even though it is negative, uh, a, a shorter cooldown is an improvement, not a, not a demotion. So it's a little weird that they even list it that way. You guys, do you guys share your... yeah. Everything up here probably swaps out, but down here the soul stone is a shared item between both states. Thou shalt face me now. Thou shalt face me now. Does the mage talk similarly? Cause she's cause she died 300 years ago. Use both worlds to solve the riddle. Oh, can you go away? Thank you. A task for a keen eye. Hmm. You can't fly across, right? No. But I think I think it it appears to freeze time whenever I go into the state, which means I can cross. There we go. Can I make it in one go? Not quite. Oh, and you can't switch. You can't switch states that fast. Come here. Yes. Yeah. Damn it. I thought there was a little bit of a lag time, and I anticipated it way too hard. There we go. Find a cenotaph to escape the Forgotten Tombs. That's not good. Alright, so it's shielded, so I assume that means that I cannot fight it. Yep, okay. But you, okay. You it still attacks me. It still, yeah, okay. Can I destroy its shield from this dimension or what? Also, can I just recruit it to be on my team? Nope. <laughs> Glad I got this ability that immediately things are immune to. It's not, they don't even list it as being immune, it just is immune. There we go. Excuse me. I would appreciate not being- oh, that- wow. It's a very small aerial particle effect that turns into a very huge splash when it lands. Uh. <laughs> I like the random rats that are just kind of hanging out throughout this campaign. Like, ha we are here too! Neither I nor the spider seem to attack them. Oop. Please die. Ow. There we go. I banked too much on that previous attack being the lethal one, and it was not... Ooh. Much better bow. Do I press this to equip it, or... I don't know. Uh, Nope. That did not equip it. Okay. So, equip, compare, drop. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of already a comparison. But anyway, uh, equip. There we go. Much stronger bow, right? Other one was a little faster. This one has way better damage, though. Like, by a significant margin. My character is, like, unrecognizable for almost... Like, the, the stuff I'm wearing has already ch massively changed his appearance. I can't continue, so... Oh. Loot, though.
There's a lot to loot around here. Just a handful of coins here and there, though. Which I still need to find a, a merchant or something to justify those. Must have to be in ghost form. This must be the cenotaph the hooded man spoke of. Its power breaches shadow. There is much I might do here. This cenotaph is erected upon the graves of many dead mortals. It shall be easy to gate weave back to this place should I find another such monument. And I sense a gate here already. The hooded man's work may happen. It must be the way out he mentioned. Well, okay, so this is a waypoint. Cenotaphs are ancient places of power which create a weakness in the veil between the worlds. It can be used as a gateway to any known cenotaph in the heretic kingdoms. Alright, so who, who judged them as being heretics, I wonder? Cenotaphs can only be accessed and activated by Devourer in the Shadow Realm. Uh, to gate, we've select destination and pick cenotaph in the description. Alright, so we're coming from the Forgotten Tubes, right? So we're going to go to some cellar. I look at the map at all? Nope, no scrolling. Let's go. Oh, that looks nice. I like the environment designs. And then we go back to him where... They're kind of, the environment design's kind of washed out because it all looks like this all the time. Uh, I guess there's no real use for this until I get more characters. Enchanting. You can enchant your equipment with essence. Essence can be found in hex marks, dimensional pockets in the Shadow Realm. Every item can be enchanted with up to four different essences. Every new essence increases the value and quality of the item. Items can be enchanted in the inventory using the essence. Let's see, inventory. Go to my weapon. How do I enchant? There it is, add essence. Flame and durability. Add crit uh, add a crit chance or fire. So it's like it's like gem socketing. Boom. Let's get some fire on there. Now it's a rough crate bow that's magical and has fire and poison damage and it's just so strong. Except that it's like the first item in the game, so of course it's not worth doing that on. But you know, this is a preview. Oh yeah, you're not gonna get much done here. Damn. What are these arrows made of? Also, how, how large is that rogue? Is he proportional to me or, or are these corpses way bigger than me? They kind of see, they almost seem bigger. Oh, hey, I actually hit a rat. I hit a rat. They're not targetable, are they? No, that was just a coincidence. Oh, but you can shift, oh, you can shift shoot. Like in Diablo, oh, that's a ragdoll. Oh, he doesn't, he doesn't actually ragdoll though. He just rolls around and now his feet are sticking up in the air. That's an odd sight. That's a real odd sight. They like their god rays. All right. Can I shoot this or oh, oh it just opens. Well, all right. Tell me what thou knowest of this place. Oh, you alive. Never been here before, but this is Thol, the city of outcasts. We have to get a message to House Malfagan. I shall decide what thou dost. Don't think it works that way, demon. You may have swallowed my soul, but I'm still my own man. Come, let's search the city. It's true, they're kind of stuck in a shared experience where they're all sh they're all in one body together. It's gonna get... It, although, in a lot of ways, clearly the demon is in control here, because the demon can swap out a huge number of people, judging by the other screen that we saw. It was cl clearly it's still gonna be the ringleader here. Principles of gate... that's the same one I got before, isn't it? Let's see. Journal, recommended level 4. The current quest? I'm level two, so we're off to a good tra uh, start there. That's volume five. Let's see. Principles of gate weaving. The mage who studies gate weaving must begin by understanding the currents of the veil. Like water flowing downhill, all essence flows from where there is life, forests, cities, plains, to where there is death, particularly monuments that mark the passing of multitudes. 
it is possible to weave gates both up and downstream, although it is always easier to gate towards death essence. The Garulians first discovered that building rune-inscribed cenotaphs upon mass graves or battlegrounds created weaknesses in the veil between worlds. The first Imperial Gateweavers began by using incantations to link one cenotaph to another, but the te technique required physically visiting the monument before a gate could be created between it and any others visited. Fortunately, an experienced Gateweaver can move others along their own paths while fac facilitating the training of scores of Gateweavers who acted as sentinels during the reign of the God Empress Korath Rex. Hell, give me that power. I'd love to have that power. I don't mean in the video game, I mean just in, for in reality. <laughs> you can travel instantly to a n large number of, of different locations. The only limitation is you have to have been there before. I'm like, alright, I'll, I'll make the journey if I just get permanent access from that point on. Certainly saves on the commutes. You can revive your fallen puppets in the party screen at the, at the sanctuary. Really uh, sets the tone for our relationship when they're listed as puppets mechanically as their name. Perched atop an ancient stone plateau amidst the red sands of the Outlands lies the city of Thol. Centuries ago, it was a major garrison for the Garulian Empire, and there may even have been a settlement prior to this era. These days, Thole is a city of thieves and outcasts. Fugitives of all kinds come here to avoid complications in neighboring nations. Not everyone in Thole has a price upon his head, but no one who dwells here is innocent. The Guild of Steel like to call themselves mercenaries, protecting the few caravans that ply their trade across the desert. Yet those that do not pay for their protection find the guild equally adept at brigandage. The guild of silk call themselves merchants and do indeed sell all manner of goods and trinkets. Though it is best not to ask them from whence they came. A vast stone gate is all that remains of the Barbican that once defended these walls. Now, it guards the city of Thole once more from the horde of nomads that besiege it. For three years, I have been hiding here amid the detritus of the heretic kingdoms. But it is only a matter of time before my former allies locate me. And I am running out of places to hide. Better if I do the talking here. There we go. I think that's a decent place to cut it. I just wanted to... I figured the moment I walked outside, you guys would get, like, probably a nice teaser of the story and the setting of, like, that Act 1 or whatever whatever the chapters or whatever might be called. This intro area. And I... Wow. That worked out perfectly. They showed a whole cutscene that swept around and showed a bunch of different characters and units and locales and vistas and whatnot. All right. So, I think this is a decent place to cut it. Thanks for watching, like always, guys. If you want to check out this game, check out the link in the description to the Steam page. It also might be on other platforms. I just kind of default to that, honestly. Uh, thanks to the developers for sending the key in the first place. Uh, this looks promising. It looks like it might have a decent take on the dungeon crawler formula by having this whole character switching formula. And I think once you get the full party, there might be some really interesting ideas. It's almost like... Uh, I mean, you're basically playing as an entire party, like you ha you can play the, the rogue, the mage, and the warrior all in one go, while also having a weird alternate dimension, like, puzzle element to it, but also I, I imagine there's probably some cool synergy going on, like I, specifically the fact that that guy can possess somebody that I can then fight alongside as my human character. I, like you, that, that sets up the idea that you can use abilities on certain characters to assist in a situation where the other character helps out from there on out. That could all be very interesting. This, this, this idea might have legs. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching like always, and I'll see you next time.